So hello, my name is Rob, this is Cat Rabbit Scout Model Studios and today I'm going to show you how I've recently painted the uh, uh, Arachnorok, I've been calling it the Giant Spooder, from the Gloom Spike kits. Um, there aren't many bits to this model, um, it looks a lot more complicated than it is, but you've only really got the hard shell, you've got the white bits and then you've got the skin and then a couple of little horns here and there, things like that. But I will put all the colours I use in the description below. Um, and I will link any techniques I've previously covered in the boxes uh, in the corners. Um, but yeah, grab some brushes. Uh, it's a great model, lots of fun. So let's get to it. So to start with, obviously preparation. This model goes together really, really nicely. Um, it's basically made up of two halves with a seam running down the bottom that's incredibly easy to hide. Um, I dry fit absolutely everything to make sure it's, um, it's all hidden and I do go over the seams in some plastic glue just to help hide them. And then the carapace pieces kind of go over the middle join so you don't see really anything at all, which is quite nice. Um, kit went together like a dream. I didn't have any issues with the legs not lining up or anything like that. And um, it was just a, a great kit to sit down on a, I think I started this on the um, maybe a Monday and uh, it was just a great kit to sit down after a long weekend and uh, just build. Um, I'm feeling a little bit deflated lately with um, models and things. I haven't really known what I fancy painting and we all get like that sometimes. Uh, and my friend kindly said that he had this still sitting on the sprue. So I said, oh, would you mind if I, if I put some paint on? He said, no, not at all. So this was actually um, painted up for my friend which I now think is going to be displayed in my local Games Workshop, which is fantastic. That's Games Workshop Stains. Uh, they're a lovely, lovely bunch of people and it's a really good community down there. So uh, yeah, highly recommended. But I just take my time. I work my way through the um, model, just cleaning everything off with a uh, blade, just in a scraping motion, just being careful. I think I had a movie on in the background and I had this done and assembled in no time at all really. Uh, once everything was clipped out and I was happy with my assemblies, I was left with this. I did keep the legs separate from left to right. Um, everything else was attached to the model um, as you can kind of see. And then to begin with painting, I base coated the top carapace sections with Mephiston Red and I left the bottom section Zandri Dust. And then to start with, I did a mix of Drucci Violet, Caraber Crimson, and about two really good brushfuls of Lamia Medium. I mixed it all together and I painted over absolutely um, the majority of the top sections. And then coming in with some very, very watery, almost glaze-like consistency Mephiston Red, just to brighten things up. Um, I just worked my round around the raised sections of the carapace followed by a dry brush of uh, Evil Sun Scarlet. Um, I did start with a little bit of Wild Rider Red, but I actually came in with some select highlights at the end, so I found that was a little bit easier. But I just worked my way all around the red sections, just taking my time. Uh, this model is a dry brush dream, um, but there's also a lot of scope there to do, you know, a lot of flourishes. Here you can see that I've come in with the Wild Rider Red and I'm just brightening out those spines and ripples in the carapaces. I then came in with some pallid witch flesh uh, around the face and I highlighted it with a mix of contrast and apothecary white. The eyes were warpstone glow and then what I did was I slowly mixed in a bit more moot green every time just to get a nice transition I was happy with and then finally it was a dot of white scar in the corners of the eyes followed by a coat of Ard Coat varnish just to give them that glassy look. Um, next up was the skin. Uh, this all started with a base coat of Bugman's Glow. I thought a skin coloured spider or like underneath would be quite creepy. Um, I think when you paint anything that isn't, well, skin, skin, makes it look a bit, I don't know, it just 
it is quite creepy for me. So uh, I thought, yeah, let's go with that. And I did all the joints and things like that in the legs, uh, same type of method. I did skip to the uh, little uh, mandible type things at the front. This was just a base coat of Abaddon Black. Then I mixed in some Eschen Grey, some Mechanica Standard Grey, followed by a line highlight of Dawnstone, just to make it look a bit sharp, things like that. Um, the skin was then achieved via a wash of Drucci Violet. I relayed Bugman's Glow. Uh, then it got a dry brush of Cadian Flesh Tone, followed by a very light highlight of Kislev Flesh. And the little yellow egg sacs were just Avalanche Sunset, uh, a wash of Cassandora Yellow, and then I added a bit of Ushabti Bone. Then I was left with kind of this. The white sections of the leg are just pure pallid witch flesh, the same way I did the markings on the face. Um, and then I had to space it on the base to make sure what I wanted to achieve was doable. So I had to jump to the base and this is what I ended up with. What I really wanted was a base that was absolutely crammed full of visual details. You get so many cool little bits of uh, gribbles with this kit, little spiders, and you've got these fantastic tree branches. Originally I hadn't used, intended to uh, use the tree sections. I was gonna do like a little bit of a rock face but I, after seeing the tree sections, I really wanted to paint them up. And they're such good little sculpts, kind of filled with lots of character, of little goblins trapped and tied up. And I could add some Stormcast shields and extra mushrooms from the old, uh, it was a Age of Sigma basing kit. I can't remember the name now. Came with little floor tile sections and things like that. It was a fantastic little kit. I think you can still get it, um, but I'm not sure. The uh, Dwarduin or Dwarf head there is from the uh, I think the Dankhold Trogoff kit. I'm not sure. I think the, oh, the little grate was from the Azerite Ruins, I believe, when it very first came out. But I just mixed in technical paint and worked my way around everything. Then I was able to position the legs. Uh, I did drill into some of the smaller bits of scenery just to make sure they went in. The black fade on the legs was achieved um, with just some dry brushing. So I would dry brush quite heavily black and then Mephiston red the other way. Then I would obviously wash everything and then I would just build up the transitions with Mephiston red, um, which was great fun. It gives a great effect and it gives the illusion of kind of blending, but it was just done with dry brush. And it was, um, I think it's given it a, a really good look. I'm really happy with how this one turned out actually. Um, the side profile is something I really like. You can kind of see that blend to black on the legs. Uh, I added a bit of warpstone glow tint to the little uh, teeth things at the back. Oh, my anatomy of spiders. Awful. Um, uh, we're at the back. Uh, just I wanted them to look poisonous. I wanted it to look like if that was a spider you found in your house you'd go oh and I'm, I'm really happy with how um, it came out. Uh, Here's some, some actual shots of me handling it. It's, you know, I, I think the, the white helps break up the red and with the darker bits of the legs, you've got that kind of little flare. Um, I've covered dry brushing before, so I will leave a link to that. Um, but that's all there is to it. You've only kind of got the, the carapace of skin and then whatever you do, the mandibles. But look, if you like this video, please uh, leave a comment below if you've got any questions or anything like that. Please do consider subscribing, drop us a like, drop us a message, and uh, I'll see you all next time. Take care.